Hi everyone and welcome to our discussion on shear turbulence. Right now we're working our way through common locations for shear turbulence. In this video we're going to talk about temperature inversions. What exactly is a temperature inversion? I think you probably know this already, but it's a region in the atmosphere where as you go up in height, temperature actually increases. Normally, we would expect temperature to decrease. Certain locations in the atmosphere, temperature may increase, and we call that an inversion. And there are two, well, actually, there are many different types of temperature inversions. In this video, we're going to only talk about two different kinds. One specifically called the radiation inversion, a nocturnal radiation inversion. And the other one is a terrain-induced inversion. So with the nocturnal radiation inversion, um, we start out looking at the day, looking at the temperature profile of the atmosphere during the day. And as you know, during the day, the sun is out, it's heating the ground, warms up the ground. So you start to get thermals that rise through the atmosphere. And if there's enough moisture, clouds may form. And then alongside of these thermals is sinking air. So you get this rising, in motion, rising motion caused by the thermals and sinking motion caused by the air coming down back down to the ground. And that mixes the lowest layers of the atmosphere. We call that the mixed layer, or also the uh, layer of convective turbulence. We already covered that in another video. When that happens, when you get this mixing, it brings uh, air with uh, faster velocities. Of course, normally higher in the atmosphere, you have winds that are have greater wind speeds. It brings the, those winds down to the ground, and it brings the weaker wind speeds at the surface to the upper levels of the atmosphere. So pretty, pretty soon in a, a layer of the atmosphere, maybe three or 4,000 feet thick, you're starting to see uh, wind profiles that are not really not really big changes in wind speed. You do have changes in wind speed, but not as big as they could have been without the mixing. So the temperature profile during the day looks like this, where as uh, you go up through at the atmosphere, temperature decreases with height. Now when the sun sets, um, there's no longer solar radiation coming in, but there is uh, surface radiation or infrared radiation that is leaving the surface. And that happens all the time. It's just during the day, it's balanced by the solar radiation coming in. At night, there's no solar radiation. So the terrestrial radiation, the infrared radiation leaves the surface and that is energy that is leaving the surface. So therefore, the temperature of the surface decreases. And you probably know this already. What that means though, is that the air that is touching the ground also cools. But higher in the atmosphere, we're talking only a few hundred feet, maybe 500 or 300 feet above the surface, the temperature doesn't really change all that much. It's not touching the ground, but the air that is in contact with the ground cools as a result of the cooling surface of the Earth. So when that happens, the lower layers cool, the upper layers stay at the same temperature, and as a result, you get a temperature inversion. These temperature inversions typically happen when you lose the most surface radiation. So in other words, when you have clear skies, and it usually happens in the lowest layers of the atmosphere. We're talking from the surface up to one or 2,000 feet above the ground level. Here's an example of a strong temperature inversion that occurred at Bismarck, North Dakota in October of 2021. Uh, the red line represents the temperature profile of the atmosphere and the blue line represents the dew point. The surface at Bismarck is about 1,600 feet MSL. The red line indicates that temperature increases from about five degrees Celsius at the surface to about maybe 24 degrees Celsius at 900 millibars, which would be about perhaps 3,000 feet MSL. So you can see that there is a really strong temperature inversion above that temperature decreases with height. Temperature inversions usually occur under high pressure conditions at the surface. If you see a big high pressure system, more than likely you're gonna have a strong inversion. And the reason for that is because usually with high pressure systems, you have clear skies aloft. 
And also, usually it happens also with light wind conditions, meaning at the surface, you'll see winds that are rather light, but aloft, they may be a little bit stronger, maybe 30 or 40 knots. It depends upon how strong that temperature inversion is, and also the pressure gradient in the upper layers of the atmosphere that's producing that wind. That at night, you have this significant shear across this temperature inversion. And remember we said that when you have stable layers and strong shear, you can get strong turbulence. Usually this turbulence is not severe or extreme turbulence. Usually it's light to moderate. It usually happens late at night, early in the morning when the sky is clear and the air is smooth aloft. But as you descend closer to the ground, you start to experience some turbulence on final approach. And it can be unsettling uh, because the, the entire flight was smooth until you get close to the ground. This is something that you just can't avoid and you kind of anticipate. So what you need to do is be alert as you descend. Um, be mindful of turbulence close to the ground if you have a clear sky and light winds at the surface. You might want to might want to slow down to maneuvering speed if you're coming in for a landing anyway you're probably slowed down. Also if you're taking off uh, be mindful of uh, the shear and the turbulence that you might experience. There is some shear so that you're going to have uh, some changes in aircraft performance and we'll talk about that when we get to low level wind shear. In your flight planning, you need to make sure you check the vertical profile of winds. You're looking for shear in the lowest layers of the atmosphere. So if you look at the surface chart or if you look at METARs, uh, you're looking for really light winds, winds that are calm or maybe up to about maybe 10 knots. And then as you go up through the atmosphere, uh, go up to the next layer, uh, you know, 3,000 foot winds if they're forecasted and the winds aloft, the FBs. Uh, or higher, you can look at even uh, constant pressure charts like the 925 millibar chart. And if you see winds that are blowing at uh, much stronger, uh, you know, 20 to 30 knots stronger than what they are at the surface, then the possibility exists for shear and also for shear turbulence. Remember that typically this type of uh, turbulence occurs late at night and early morning hours. Uh, usually with uh, cooler temperatures at the surface, warmer temperatures aloft. In other words, there's a temperature inversion, so a very stable atmosphere. And right at the base of that inversion, that's where you're going to find the strongest shear and probably also the strongest turbulence. And then flight planning, what you want to look for also is, of course, a clear sky. Clear sky means that you're going to have strong radiational inversion, uh, strong radiation loss and an inversion that forms. And then this typically happens under high pressure conditions when uh, you have kind of benign weather pattern at the surface. Here's a case of really strong shear that occurred in International Falls. Notice that at the surface, the winds are dead calm according to this uh, chart, this uh, graphical uh, depiction of uh, surface observations. And uh, this is the 12Z observation, so it's early morning hours. Notice to the west, the winds are a lot stronger through the Red River Valley and even to the south. But across northern Minnesota, the winds are kind of light at the surface. Here are your METARs for the morning. Starting at 9.55 Zulu, so early morning hours, winds are variable at 6. Notice that earlier the winds were a little bit stronger. They're gusting to 17, which is kind of unusual. You see... Um, you know, kind of light winds and then just a little gust. So that tells you that maybe some winds from the aloft are mixing down or getting down to the surface occasionally. But in the early morning hours, it looks like you have really light winds, four, six knots, and the sky is clear, which tells you that there is strong radiation, uh, a strong loss of radiation from the surface, uh, infrared radiation. The METARs are also telling, uh, not the METARs, but the TAF is also telling the same story. Uh, the International Falls TAF for 12Z, starting at 12Z in the morning. It is got in there. They do have in there uh, gusts of 18 for the wind. But then uh, if you go higher, uh, 2,000 feet, just 2,000 feet above the surface, 
Notice the winds are 210 at 40 knots. They're really screaming, so there's strong winds aloft. This is the Radiosan Ascent at 12 Zulu from International Falls. They have a uh, observation right there. Notice the strong inversion near the surface. The inversion uh, reaches about uh, maybe 800 millibars. That's where you see the nose of that inversion or the base of the inversion. And then look at the shear at the surface. The winds are only about 10 knots, but at the top of that inversion, you can see the winds are 50 knots observed. That is a strong shear layer, and that is something that pilots need to be mindful of. So there is turbulence associated with this more than likely, and also uh, shear considerations for performance. This is the um, air met that came out for that region. And while there is not a forecast of turbulence shown here uh, for uh, 12 Zulu, uh, the forecast, there is an indication of strong low-level wind shear um, stretching from northern Minnesota all the way down to the Texas Panhandle, and that includes International Falls. So they're mindful, these forecasters are mindful that there is strong shear in that region. And with that, pilots should take heed. Another type of inversion that develops happens in mountainous areas, maybe even just areas that have uh, irregular terrain, have rough terrain. And this is uh, terrain-induced temperature inversions. What happens is a temperature inversion develops in low-lying areas where um, you have cold air filling the valley. So in other words, the air in contact with the surface of the earth cools, and since the surface of the earth is sloping, the air, the colder air, uh, flows down to the lowest lying areas. And as a result, you have a little bit warmer air aloft. So if you have light winds at the surface, once again, we're talking winds less than 10 knots and then stronger winds aloft, that produces a significant shear layer, and also you have stability, so you will have uh, perhaps some turbulence. This is most common typically at night and early morning hours, once again, when the sun sets or just before the sun rises. And the strength of the shear determines how much turbulence you get. So things to be mindful of, it's very similar to nocturnal radiation inversions. Nocturnal radiation inversions usually happen over flat terrain. We're talking about sloping terrain here. So you know, be mindful during departure or arrivals of this hazard, uh, slow to maneuvering speed, and then uh, start thinking about the type of shear that you're gonna experience. And we'll talk more about how to handle low-level wind shear uh, in another section. And then flight planning, you look for clear skies, light winds at the surface, stronger winds aloft. Typically it happens under high pressure uh, conditions. And uh, also you have a, a little bit stronger pressure gradient aloft that's uh, causing the winds to blow. Also try and visualize the terrain features. In other words, uh, are you looking at a region that is sitting in a valley? Uh, that cold air draining into that valley is a good cause for uh, terrain-induced temperature inversions and the shear that accompanies them. So that's all I've got for temperature inversions, and we have more videos with common locations where you'll find shear turbulence.